section eight of state of the union addresses eighteen twenty nine to eighteen thirty six this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org andrew jackson december four eighteen thirty two part one fellow citizens of the senate and of the house of representatives it gives me pleasure to congratulate you upon your return to the seat of government for the purpose of discharging your duties to the people of the united states although the pestilence which had traversed the old world has entered our limits and extended its ravages over much of our land it has pleased almighty god to mitigate its severity and lessen the number of its victims compared with those who have fallen in most other countries over which it has spread its terrors notwithstanding this visitation our country presents on every side marks of prosperity and happiness unequalled perhaps in any other portion of the world if we fully appreciate our comparative condition existing causes of discontent will appear unworthy of attention and with hearts of thankfulness to that divine being who has filled our cup of prosperity we shall feel our resolution strengthened to preserve and hand down to our posterity that liberty and that union which we have received from our fathers and which constitute the sources and the shield of all our blessings the relations of our country continue to present the same picture of amicable intercourse that i had the satisfaction to hold up to your view at the opening of your last session the same friendly professions the same desire to participate in our flourishing commerce the same dispositions evinced by all nations with whom we have any intercourse this desirable state of things may be mainly ascribed to our undeviating practice of the rule which has long guided our national policy to require no exclusive privileges in commerce and to grant none it is daily producing its beneficial effect in the respect shown to our flag the protection of our citizens and their property abroad and in the increase of our navigation and the extension of our mercantile operations the returns which have been made out since we last met will show an increase during the last preceding year of more than eighty thousand tons in our shipping and of near forty million dollars in the aggregate of our imports and exports nor have we less reason to felicitate ourselves on the position of our political than of our commercial concerns they remain in the state in which they were when i last addressed you a state of prosperity and peace the effect of a wise attention to the parting advice of the revered father of his country on this subject condensed into a maxim for the use of posterity by one of his most distinguished successors to cultivate free commerce and honest friendship with all nations but to make entangling alliances with none a strict adherence to this policy has kept us aloof from the perplexing questions that now agitate the european world and have more than once deluged those countries with blood should those scenes unfortunately recur the parties to the contest may count on a faithful performance of the duties incumbent on us as a neutral nation and our own citizens may equally rely on the firm assertion of their neutral rights with the nation that was our earliest friend and ally in the infancy of our political existence the most friendly relations have subsisted through the late revolutions of its government and from the events of the last promise a permanent duration it has made an approximation in some of its political institutions to our own and raised a monarch to the throne who preserves it is said a friendly recollection of the period during which he acquired among our citizens the high consideration that could then have been produced by his personal qualifications alone 
our commerce with that nation is gradually assuming a mutually beneficial character and the adjustment of the claims of our citizens has removed the only obstacle there was to an intercourse not only lucrative but productive of literary and scientific improvement from great britain i have the satisfaction to inform you that i continue to receive assurances of the most amicable disposition which have on my part on all proper occasions been promptly and sincerely reciprocated the attention of that government has latterly been so much engrossed by matters of a deeply interesting domestic character that we could not press upon it the renewal of negotiations which had been unfortunately broken off by the unexpected recall of our minister who had commenced them with some hopes of success my great object was the settlement of questions which though now dormant might hereafter be revived under circumstances that would endanger the good understanding which it is the interest of both parties to preserve and violate cemented as it is by a community of language manners and social habits and by the high obligations we owe to our british ancestors for many of our most valuable institutions and for that system of representative government which has enabled us to preserve and improve them the question of our northeast boundary still remains unsettled in my last annual message i explained to you the situation in which i found that business on my coming into office and the measures i thought it my duty to pursue for asserting the rights of the united states before the sovereign who had been chosen by my predecessor to determine the question and also the manner in which he had disposed of it a special message to the senate in their executive capacity afterwards brought before them to the question whether they would advise a submission to the opinion of the sovereign arbiter that body having considered the award as not obligatory and advised me to open a further negotiation the proposition was immediately made to the british government but the circumstances to which i have alluded have hitherto prevented any answer being given to the overture early attention however has been promised to the subject and every effort on my part will be made for a satisfactory settlement of this question interesting to the union generally and particularly so to one of its members the claims of our citizens on spain are not yet acknowledged on a closer investigation of them than appears to have heretofore taken place it was discovered that some of these demands however strong they might be upon the equity of that government were not such as could be made the subject of national interference and faithful to the principle of asking nothing but what was clearly right additional instructions have been sent to modify our demands so as to embrace those only on which according to the laws of nations we had a strict right to insist an inevitable delay in procuring the documents necessary for this review of the merits of these claims retarded this operation until an unfortunate malady which has afflicted his catholic majesty prevented an examination of them being now for the first time presented in an unexceptionable form it is confidently hoped that the application will be successful i have the satisfaction to inform you that the application i directed to be made for the delivery of a part of the archives of florida which had been carried to the havana has produced a royal order for their delivery and that measures have been taken to procure its execution by the report of the secretary of state communicated to you on june twenty fifth eighteen thirty two you were informed of the conditional reduction obtained by the minister of the united states at madrid of the duties on tonnage levied on american shipping in the ports of spain the condition of that reduction having been complied with on our part by the act passed july thirteenth eighteen thirty two i have the satisfaction to inform you that our ships now pay no higher nor other duties in the continental ports of spain than are levied on their national vessels 
the demands against portugal for illegal captures in the blockade of terceira have been allowed to the full amount of the accounts presented by the claimants and payment was promised to be made in three instalments the first of these has been paid the second although due had not at the date of our last advices been received owing it was alleged to embarrassments in the finances consequent on the civil war in which that nation is engaged the payments stipulated by the convention with denmark have been punctually made and the amount is ready for distribution among the claimants as soon as the board now sitting shall have performed their functions i regret that by the last advices from our charge d'affaires at naples that government had still delayed the satisfaction due to our citizens but at that date the effect of the last instructions was not known dispatches from thence are hourly expected and the result will be communicated to you without delay with the rest of europe our relations political and commercial remain unchanged negotiations are going on to put on a permanent basis the liberal system of commerce now carried on between us and the empire of russia the treaty concluded with austria is executed by his imperial majesty with the most perfect good faith and as we have no diplomatic agent at his court he personally inquired into and corrected a proceeding of some of his subaltern officers to the injury of our consul in one of his ports our treaty with the sublime port is producing its expected effects on our commerce new markets are opening for our commodities and a more extensive range for the employment of our ships a slight augmentation of the duties on our commerce inconsistent with the spirit of the treaty had been imposed but on the representation of our charge d'affaires it has been promptly withdrawn and we now enjoy the trade and navigation of the black sea and of all the ports belonging to the turkish empire and asia on the most perfect equality with all foreign nations i wish earnestly that in announcing to you the continuance of friendship and the increase of a profitable commercial intercourse with mexico with central america and the states of the south i could accompany it with the assurance that they all are blessed with that internal tranquillity and foreign peace which their heroic devotion to the cause of their independence merits in mexico a sanguinary struggle is now carried on which has caused some embarrassment to our commerce but both parties profess the most kindly disposition toward us to the termination of this contest we look for the establishment of that secure intercourse so necessary to nations whose territories are contiguous how important it will be to us we may calculate from the fact that even in this unfavorable state of things our maritime commerce has increased and an internal trade by caravans from st louis to santa fe under the protection of escorts furnished by the government is carried on to great advantage and is daily increasing the agents provided for by the treaty with this power to designate the boundaries which it established have been named on our part but one of the evils of the civil war now raging there has been that the appointment of those with whom they were to cooperate has not yet been announced to us the government of central america has expelled from its territory the party which some time since disturbed its peace desirous of fostering a favorable disposition toward us which has on more than one occasion been evinced by this interesting country i made a second attempt in this year to establish a diplomatic intercourse with them but the death of the distinguished citizen whom i had appointed for that purpose has retarded the execution of measures from which i hoped much advantage to our commerce the union of the three states which form the republic of colombia has been dissolved but they all it is believed consider themselves as separately bound by the treaty which was made in their federal capacity 
the minister accredited to the federation continues in that character near the government of new granada and hopes were entertained that a new union would be formed between the separate states at least for the purposes of foreign intercourse our minister has been instructed to use his good offices whenever they shall be desired to produce the reunion so much to be wished for the domestic tranquillity of the parties and the security and facility of foreign commerce some agitations naturally attendant on an infant reign have prevailed in the empire of brazil which have had the usual effect upon commercial operations and while they suspended the consideration of claims created on similar occasions they have given rise to new complaints on the part of our citizens a proper consideration for calamities and difficulties of this nature has made us less urgent and peremptory in our demands for justice than duty to our fellow-citizens would under other circumstances have required but their claims are not neglected and will on all proper occasions be urged and it is hoped with effect i refrain from making any communication on the subject of our affairs with buenos aires because the negotiation communed to you in my last annual message was at the date of our last advices still pending and in a state that would render a publication of the details inexpedient a treaty of amity and commerce has been formed with the republic of chile which if approved by the senate will be laid before you that government seems to be established and at peace with its neighbours and its ports being the resorts of our ships which are employed in the highly important trade of the fisheries this commercial convention cannot but be of great advantage to our fellow-citizens engaged in that perilous but profitable business our commerce with the neighboring state of peru owing to the onerous duties levied on our principal articles of export has been on the decline and all endeavors to procure an alteration have hitherto proved fruitless with bolivia we have yet no diplomatic intercourse and the continual contests carried on between it and peru have made me defer until a more favorable period the appointment of any agent for that purpose an act of atrocious piracy having been committed on one of our trading ships by the inhabitants of a settlement on the west coast of sumatra a frigate was dispatched with orders to demand satisfaction for the injury if those who committed it should be found to be members of a regular government capable of maintaining the usual relations with foreign nations but if as it was supposed and as they proved to be they were a band of lawless pirates to inflict such a chastisement as would deter them and others from like aggressions this last was done and the effect has been an increased respect for our flag in those distant seas and additional security for our commerce in the view i have given of our connection with foreign powers allusions have been made to their domestic disturbances or foreign wars to their revolutions or dissensions it may be proper to observe that this is done solely in cases where those events affect our political relations with them or to show their operation on our commerce further than this it is neither our policy nor our right to interfere our best wishes on all occasions our good offices when required will be afforded to promote the domestic tranquillity and foreign peace of all nations with whom we have any intercourse any intervention in their affairs further than this even by the expression of an official opinion is contrary to our principles of international policy and will always be avoided the report which the secretary of the treasury will in due time lay before you will exhibit the national finances in a highly prosperous state owing to the continued success of our commercial enterprise which has enabled the merchants to fulfil their engagements with the government the receipts from customs during the year will exceed the estimate presented at the last session and with the other means of the treasury will prove fully adequate not only to meet the increased expenditures resulting from the large appropriations made by congress but to provide for the payment of all the public debt which is at present redeemable 
it is now estimated that the customs will yield to the treasury during the present year upward of twenty eight million dollars the public lands however have proved less productive than was anticipated and according to present information will not much exceed two million dollars the expenditures for all objects other than the public debt are estimated to amount during the year to about sixteen million five hundred thousand dollars while a still larger sum viz eighteen million dollars will have been applied to the principal and interest of the public debt it is expected however that in consequence of the reduced rates of duty which will take effect after march third eighteen thirty three there will be a considerable falling off in the revenue from customs in the year eighteen thirty three it will nevertheless be amply sufficient to provide for all the wants of the public service estimated even upon a liberal scale and for the redemption and purchase of the remainder of the public debt on january first eighteen thirty three the entire public debt of the united states funded and unfunded will be reduced to within a fraction of seven million dollars of which two million two hundred twenty seven thousand three hundred sixty three dollars are not of right redeemable until january first eighteen thirty four and four million seven hundred thirty five thousand two hundred and ninety six dollars not until january second eighteen thirty five the commissioners of the sinking funds however being invested with full authority to purchase the debt at the market price and the means of the treasury being ample it may be hoped that the whole will be extinguished within the year eighteen thirty three i cannot too cordially congratulate congress and my fellow-citizens on the near approach of that memorable and happy event the extinction of the public debt of this great and free nation faithful to the wise and patriotic policy marked out by the legislation of the country for this object the present administration has devoted to it all the means which a flourishing commerce has supplied and a prudent economy preserved for the public treasury within the four years for which the people have confided the executive power to my charge fifty eight million dollars will have been applied to the payment of the public debt that this has been accomplished without stinting the expenditures for all other proper objects will be seen by referring to the liberal provision made during the same period for the support and increase of our means of maritime and military defence for internal improvements of a national character for the removal and preservation of the indians and lastly for the gallant veterans of the revolution the final removal of this great burthen from our resources affords the means of further provision for all the objects of general welfare and public defence which the constitution authorizes and presents the occasion for such further reductions in the revenue as may not be required for them from the report of the secretary of the treasury it will be seen that after the present year such a reduction may be made to a considerable extent and the subject is earnestly recommended to the consideration of congress in the hope that the combined wisdom of the representatives of the people will devise such means of effecting that salutary object as may remove those burthens which shall be found to fall unequally upon any and as may promote all the great interests of the community long and patient reflection has strengthened the opinions i have heretofore expressed to congress on this subject and i deem it my duty on the present occasion again to urge them upon the attention of the legislature the soundest maxims of public policy and the principles upon which our republican institutions are founded recommend a proper adaptation of the revenue to the expenditure and they also require that the expenditure shall be limited to what by an economical administration shall be consistent with the simplicity of the government and necessary to an efficient public service in effecting this adjustment it is due in justice to the interests of the different states and even to the preservation of the union itself that the protection afforded by existing laws to any branches of the national industry should not exceed what may be necessary to counteract the regulations of foreign nations and to secure a supply of those articles of manufacture essential to the national independence and safety in time of war 
if upon investigation it shall be found as it is believed it will be that the legislative protection granted to any particular interest is greater than is indispensably requisite for these objects i recommend that it be gradually diminished and that as far as may be consistent with these objects the whole scheme of duties be reduced to the revenue standard as soon as a just regard to the faith of the government and to the preservation of the large capital investment in establishments of domestic industry will permit that manufactures adequate to the supply of our domestic consumption would in the abstract be beneficial to our country there is no reason to doubt and to effect their establishment there is perhaps no american citizen who would not for a while be willing to pay a higher price for them but for this purpose it is presumed that a tariff of high duties designed for perpetual protection which they maintain has the effect to reduce the price by domestic competition below that of the foreign article experience however our best guide on this as on other subjects makes it doubtful whether the advantages of this system are not counterbalanced by many evils and whether it does not tend to beget in the minds of a large portion of our countrymen a spirit of discontent and jealousy dangerous to the stability of the union what then shall be done large interests have grown up under the implied pledge of our national legislation which it would seem a violation of public faith suddenly to abandon nothing could justify but the public safety which is the supreme law but those who have vested their capital in manufacturing establishments cannot expect that the people will continue permanently to pay high taxes for their benefit when the money is not required for any legitimate purpose in the administration of the government is it not enough that the high duties have been paid as long as the money arising from them could be applied to the common benefit in the extinguishment of the public debt those who take an enlarged view of the condition of our country must be satisfied that the policy of protection must be ultimately limited to those articles of domestic manufacture which are indispensable to our safety in time of war within this scope on a reasonable scale it is recommended by every consideration of patriotism and duty which will doubtless always secure to it a liberal and efficient support but beyond this object we have already seen the operation of the system productive of discontent in some sections of the republic its influence is deprecated as tending to concentrate wealth into a few hands and as creating those germs of dependence and vice which in other countries have characterized the existence of monopolies and proved so destructive of liberty and the general good a large portion of the people in one section of the republic declares it not only inexpedient on these grounds but as disturbing the equal relations of property by legislation and therefore unconstitutional and unjust doubtless these effects are in a great degree exaggerated and may be ascribed to a mistaken view of the considerations which led to the adoption of the tariff system but they are nevertheless important in enabling us to review the subject with a more thorough knowledge of all its bearings upon the great interests of the republic and with a determination to dispose of it so that none can with justice complain End of section eight. section nine of state of the union addresses eighteen twenty nine to eighteen thirty six this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org andrew jackson december fourth eighteen thirty two part two it is my painful duty to state that in one quarter of the united states opposition to the revenue laws has arisen to a height which threatens to thwart their execution if not to endanger the integrity of the union whatever obstructions may be thrown in the way of the judicial authorities of the general government it is hoped they will be able peaceably to overcome them by the prudence of their own officers and the patriotism of the people but should this reasonable reliance on the moderation and good sense of all portions of our fellow-citizens be disappointed 
it is believed that the laws themselves are fully adequate to the suppression of such attempts as may be immediately made should the exigency arise rendering the execution of the existing laws impracticable from any cause whatever prompt notice of it will be given to congress with a suggestion of such views and measures as may be deemed necessary to meet it in conformity with principles heretofore explained and with the hope of reducing the general government to that simple machine which the constitution created and of withdrawing from the states all other influence than that of its universal beneficence in preserving peace affording an uniform currency maintaining the inviolability of contracts diffusing intelligence and discharging unfelt its other superintending functions i recommend that provision be made to dispose of all stocks now held by it in corporations whether created by the general or state governments and placing the proceeds in the treasury as a source of profit these stocks are of little or no value as a means of influence among the states they are adverse to the purity of our institutions the whole principle on which they are based is deemed by many unconstitutional and to persist in the policy which they indicate is considered wholly inexpedient it is my duty to acquaint you with an arrangement made by the bank of the united states with a portion of the holders of the three per cent stock by which the government will be deprived of the use of the public funds longer than was anticipated by this arrangement which will be particularly explained by the secretary of the treasury a surrender of the certificates of this stock may be postponed until october eighteen thirty three and thus may be continued by the failure of the bank to perform its duties such measures as are within the reach of the secretary of the treasury have been taken to enable him to judge whether the public deposits in that institution may be regarded as entirely safe but as his limited power may prove inadequate to this object i recommend the subject to the attention of congress under the firm belief that it is worthy of their serious investigation an inquiry into the transactions of the institution embracing the branches as well as the principal bank seems called for by the credit which is given throughout the country to many serious charges impeaching its character and which if true may justly excite the apprehension that it is no longer a safe depository of the money of the people among the interests which merit the consideration of congress after the payment of the public debt one of the most important in my view is that of the public lands previous to the formation of our present constitution it was recommended by congress that a portion of the waste lands owned by the states should be ceded to the united states for the purposes of general harmony and as a fund to meet the expenses of the war the recommendation was adopted and at different periods of time the states of massachusetts new york virginia north and south carolina and georgia granted their vacant soil for the uses for which they had been asked as the lands may now be considered as relieved from this pledge it is in the discretion of congress to dispose of them in such way as best to conduce to the quiet harmony and general interest of the american people in examining this question all local and sectional feelings should be discarded and the whole united states regarded as one people interested alike in the prosperity of their common country it cannot be doubted that the speedy settlement of these lands constitutes the true interest of the republic the wealth and strength of a country are its population and the best part of that population are cultivators of the soil independent farmers are everywhere the basis of society and true friends of liberty in addition to these considerations questions have already arisen and may be expected hereafter to grow out of the public lands which involve the rights of the new states and the powers of the general government and unless a liberal policy be now adopted there is danger that these questions may speedily assume an importance not now generally anticipated the 
influence of a great sectional interest when brought into full action will be found more dangerous to the harmony and union of the states than any other cause of discontent and it is the part of wisdom and sound policy to foresee its approaches and endeavor if possible to counteract them of the various schemes which have been hitherto proposed in regard to the disposal of the public lands none has yet received the entire approbation of the national legislature deeply impressed with the importance of a speedy and satisfactory arrangement of the subject i deem it my duty on this occasion to urge it upon your consideration and to the propositions which have been heretofore suggested by others to contribute those reflections which have occurred to me in the hope that they may assist you in your future deliberations it seems to me to be our policy that the public lands shall cease as soon as practicable to be a source of revenue and that they be sold to settlers in limited parcels at a price barely sufficient to reimburse to the united states the expense of the present system and the cost arising under our indian compacts the advantages of accurate surveys and undoubted titles now secured to purchasers seem to forbid the abolition of the present system because none can be substituted which will more perfectly accomplish these important ends it is desirable however that in convenient time this machinery be withdrawn from the states and that the right of soil and the future disposition of it be surrendered to the states respectively in which it lies the adventurous and hardy population of the west besides contributing their equal share of taxation under our impost system have in the progress of our government for the lands they occupy paid into the treasury a large proportion of forty million dollars and of the revenue received therefrom but a small part has been expended among them when to the disadvantage of their situation in this respect we add the consideration that it is their labor alone which gives real value to the lands and that the proceeds arising from their sale are distributed chiefly among states which had not originally any claim to them and which have enjoyed the undivided emolument arising from the sale of their own lands it cannot be expected that the new states will remain longer contented with the present policy after the payment of the public debt to avert the consequences which may be apprehended from this cause to put an end for ever to all partial and interested legislation on the subject and to afford to every american citizen of enterprise the opportunity of securing an independent freehold it seems to me therefore best to abandon the idea of raising a future revenue out of the public lands in former messages i have expressed my conviction that the constitution does not warrant the application of the funds of the general government to objects of internal improvement which are not national in their character and both as a means of doing justice to all interests and putting an end to a course of legislation calculated to destroy the purity of the government have urged the necessity of reducing the whole subject to some fixed and certain rule as there never will occur a period perhaps more propitious than the present to the accomplishment of this object i beg leave to press the subject again upon your attention without some general and well-defined principles ascertaining those objects of internal improvement to which the means of the nation may be constitutionally applied it is obvious that the exercise of the power can never be satisfactory besides the danger to which it exposes congress of making hasty appropriations to works of the character of which they may be frequently ignorant it promotes a mischievous and corrupting influence upon elections by holding out to the people the fallacious hope that the success of a certain candidate will make navigable their neighboring creek or river bring commerce to their doors and increase the value of their property it thus favors combinations to squander the treasure of the country upon a multitude of local objects as fatal to just legislation as to the purity of public men if a system compatible with the constitution cannot be devised which is free from such tendencies we should recollect that that instrument provides within itself 
the mode of its amendment and that there is therefore no excuse for the assumption of doubtful powers by the general government if those which are clearly granted shall be found incompetent to the ends of its creation it can at any time apply for their enlargement and there is no probability that such an application if founded on the public interest will ever be refused if the propriety of the proposed grant be not sufficiently apparent to command the assent of three-fourths of the states the best possible reason why the power should not be assumed on doubtful authority is afforded for if more than one quarter of the states are unwilling to make the grant its exercise will be productive of discontents which will far overbalance any advantages that could be derived from it all must admit that there is nothing so worthy of the constant solicitude of this government as the harmony and union of the people being solemnly impressed with the conviction that the extension of the power to make internal improvements beyond the limit i have suggested even if it be deemed constitutional is subversive of the best interests of our country i earnestly recommend to congress to refrain from its exercise in doubtful cases except in relation to improvements already begun unless they shall first procure from the states such an amendment of the constitution as will define its character and and prescribe its bounds if the states feel themselves competent to these objects why should this government wish to assume the power if they do not then they will not hesitate to make the grant both governments are the governments of the people improvements must be made with the money of the people and if the money can be collected and applied by those more simple and economical political machines the state governments it will unquestionably be safer and better for the people than to add to the splendor the patronage and the power of the general government but if the people of the several states think otherwise they will amend the constitution and in their decision all ought cheerfully to acquiesce for a detailed and highly satisfactory view of the operations of the war department i refer you to the accompanying report of the secretary of war the hostile incursions of the sac and fox indians necessarily led to the interposition of the government a portion of the troops under general scott and atkinson and of the militia of the state of illinois were called into the field after a harassing warfare prolonged by the nature of the country and by the difficulty of procuring subsistence the indians were entirely defeated and the disaffected band dispersed or destroyed the result has been creditable to the troops engaged in the service severe as is the lesson to the indians it was rendered necessary by their unprovoked aggressions and it is to be hoped that its impression will be permanent and salutary this campaign has evinced the efficient organization of the army and its capacity for prompt and active service its several departments have performed their functions with energy and dispatch and the general movement was satisfactory our fellow-citizens upon the frontiers were ready as they always are in the tender of their services in the hour of danger but a more efficient organization of our militia system is essential to that security which is one of the principal objects of all governments neither our situation nor our institutions require or permit the maintenance of a large regular force history offers too many lessons of the fatal result of such a measure not to warn us against its adoption here the expense which attends it the obvious tendency to employ it because it exists and thus to engage in unnecessary wars and its ultimate danger to public liberty will lead us i trust to place our principal dependence for protection upon the great body of the citizens of the republic if in asserting rights or in repelling wrongs war should come upon us our regular force should be increased to an extent proportional to the emergency and our present small army is a nucleus around which such force could be formed and embodied but for the purposes of defence under ordinary circumstances we must rely upon the electors of the country those by whom and for whom the government was instituted and is supported will constitute its protection in the hour of danger as they do its check in the hour of safety but it is obvious that the militia system is imperfect 
much time is lost much unnecessary expense incurred and much public property wasted under the present arrangement little useful knowledge is gained by the musters and drills as now established and the whole subject evidently requires a thorough examination whether a plan of classification remedying these defects and providing for a system of instruction might not be adopted is submitted to the consideration of congress the constitution has vested in the general government an independent authority upon the subject of the militia which renders its action essential to the establishment or improvement of the system and i recommend the matter to your consideration in the conviction that the state of this important arm of the public defence requires your attention i am happy to inform you that the wise and humane policy of transferring from the eastern to the western side of the mississippi the remnants of our aboriginal tribes with their own consent and upon just terms has been steadily pursued and is approaching i trust its consummation by reference to the report of the secretary of war and to the documents submitted with it you will see the progress which has been made since your last session in the arrangement of the various matters connected with our indian relations with one exception every subject involving any question of conflicting jurisdiction or of peculiar difficulty has been happily disposed of and the conviction evidently gains ground among the indians that their removal to the country assigned by the united states for their permanent residence furnishes the only hope of their ultimate prosperity with that portion of the cherokees however living within the state of georgia it has been found impracticable as yet to make a satisfactory adjustment such was my anxiety to remove all the grounds of complaint and to bring to a termination the difficulties in which they are involved that i directed the very liberal propositions to be made to them which accompany the documents herewith submitted they cannot but have seen in these offers the evidence of the strongest disposition on the part of the government to deal justly and liberally with them an ample indemnity was offered for their present possessions a liberal provision for their future support and improvement and full security for their private and political rights whatever difference of opinion may have prevailed respecting the just claims of these people there will probably be none respecting the liberality of the propositions and very little respecting the expediency of their immediate acceptance they were however rejected and thus the position of these indians remains unchanged as do the views communicated in my message to the senate of february twenty second eighteen thirty one i refer you to the annual report of the secretary of the navy which accompanies this message for a detail of the operations of that branch of the service during the present year besides the general remarks on some of the transactions of our navy presented in the view which has been taken of our foreign relations i seize this occasion to invite to your notice the increased protection which it has afforded to our commerce and citizens on distant seas without any augmentation of the force in commission in the gradual improvement of its pecuniary concerns in the constant progress in the collection of materials suitable for use during future emergencies and in the construction of vessels and the buildings necessary to their preservation and repair the present state of this branch of the service exhibits the fruits of that vigilance and care which are so indispensable to its efficiency various new suggestions contained in the annex report as well as others heretofore to congress are worthy of your attention but none more so than that urging the renewal for another term of six years of the general appropriation for the gradual improvement of the navy from the accompanying report of the postmaster-general you will also perceive that that department continues to extend its usefulness without impairing its resources or lessening the accommodations which it affords in the secure and rapid transportation of the mail i beg leave to call the attention of congress to the views heretofore expressed in relation to the mode of choosing the president and vice-president of the united states and to those respecting the tenure of office generally 
still impressed with the justness of those views and with the belief that the modifications suggested on those subjects if adopted will contribute to the prosperity and harmony of the country i earnestly recommend them to your consideration at this time i have heretofore pointed out defects in the law for punishing official frauds especially within the district of columbia it has been found almost impossible to bring notorious culprits to punishment and according to a decision of the court for this district a prosecution is barred by a lapse of two years after the fraud has been committed it may happen again as it has already happened that during the whole two years all the evidences of the fraud may be in the possession of the culprit himself however proper the limitation may be in relation to private citizens it would seem that it ought not to commence running in favor of public officers until they go out of office the judiciary system of the united states remains imperfect of the nine western and southwestern states three only enjoy the benefits of a circuit court ohio kentucky and tennessee are embraced in the general system but indiana illinois missouri alabama mississippi and louisiana have only district courts if the existing system be a good one why should it not be extended if it be a bad one why is it suffered to exist the new states were promised equal rights and privileges when they came into the union and such are the guarantees of the constitution nothing can be more obvious than the obligation of the general government to place all the states on the same footing in relation to the administration of justice and i trust this duty will be neglected no longer on many of the subjects to which your attention is invited in this communication it is a source of gratification to reflect that the steps to be now adopted are uninfluenced by the embarrassments entailed upon the country by the wars through which it has passed in regard to most of our great interests we may consider ourselves as just starting in our career and after a salutary experience about to fix upon a permanent basis the policy best calculated to promote the happiness of the people and facilitate their progress toward the most complete enjoyment of civil liberty on an occasion so interesting and important in our history and of such anxious concern to the friends of freedom throughout the world it is our imperious duty to lay aside all selfish and local considerations and be guided by a lofty spirit of devotion to the great principles on which our institutions are founded that this government may be so administered as to preserve its efficiency in promoting and securing these general objects should be the only aim of our ambition and we cannot therefore too carefully examine its structure in order that we may not mistake its powers or assume those which the people have reserved to themselves or have preferred to assign to other agents we should bear constantly in mind the fact that the considerations which induce the framers of the constitution to withhold from the general government the power to regulate the great mass of the business and concerns of the people have been fully justified by experience and that it cannot now be doubted that the genius of all our institutions prescribes simplicity and economy as the characteristics of the reform which is yet to be effected in the present and future execution of the functions bestowed upon us by the constitution limited to a general superintending power to maintain peace at home and abroad and to prescribe laws on a few subjects of general interest not calculated to restrict human liberty but to enforce human rights this government will find its strength and its glory in the faithful discharge of these plain and simple duties relieved by its protecting shield from the fear of war and the apprehension of oppression the free enterprise of our citizens aided by the state sovereignties will work out improvements and ameliorations which cannot fail to demonstrate that the great truth that the people can govern themselves is not only realized in our example but that it is done by a machinery in government so simple and economical as scarcely to be felt 
that the almighty ruler of the universe may so direct our deliberations and overrule our acts as to make us instrumental in securing a result so dear to mankind is my most earnest and sincere prayer end of section nine section ten of state of the union addresses eighteen twenty nine to eighteen thirty six this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org andrew jackson december three eighteen thirty three part one fellow citizens of the senate and of the house of representatives on your assembling to perform the high trusts which the people of the united states have confided to you of legislating for their common welfare it gives me pleasure to congratulate you upon the happy condition of our beloved country by the favor of divine providence health is again restored to us peace reigns within our borders abundance crowns the labors of our fields commerce and domestic industry flourish and increase and individual happiness rewards the private virtue and enterprise of our citizens our condition abroad is no less honorable than it is prosperous at home seeking nothing that is not right and determined to submit to nothing that is wrong but desiring honest friendships and liberal intercourse with all nations the united states have gained throughout the world the confidence and respect which are due to a policy so just and so congenial to the character of the american people and to the spirit of their institutions in bringing to your notice the particular state of our foreign affairs it affords me high gratification to inform you that they are in a condition which promises the continuance of friendship with all nations with great britain the interesting question of our northeast boundary remains still undecided a negotiation however upon that subject has been renewed since the close of the last congress and a proposition has been submitted to the british government with the view of establishing in conformity with the resolution of the senate the line designated by the treaty of seventeen eighty three though no definitive answer has been received it may be daily looked for and i entertain a hope that the overture may ultimately lead to a satisfactory adjustment of this important matter i have the satisfaction to inform you that a negotiation which by desire of the house of representatives was opened some years ago with the british government for the erection of light houses on the bahamas has been successful those works when completed together with those which the united states have constructed on the western side of the gulf of florida will contribute essentially to the safety of navigation in that sea this joint participation in establishments interesting to humanity and beneficial to commerce is worthy of two enlightened nations and indicates feelings which cannot fail to have a happy influence upon their political relations it is gratifying to the friends of both to perceive that the intercourse between the two people is becoming daily more extensive and that sentiments of mutual good will have grown up befitting their common origin and justifying the hope that by wise counsels on each side not only unsettled questions may be satisfactorily terminated but new causes of misunderstanding prevented notwithstanding that i continue to receive the most amicable assurances from the government of france and that in all other respects the most friendly relations exist between the united states and that government it is to be regretted that the stipulations of the convention concluded on july fourth eighteen thirty one remain in some important parts unfulfilled 
by the second article of that convention it was stipulated that the sum payable to the united states should be paid at paris in six annual installments into the hands of such person or persons as should be authorized by the government of the united states to receive it and by the same article the first installment was payable on february second eighteen thirty three by the act of congress of july thirteenth eighteen thirty two it was made the duty of the secretary of the treasury to cause the several installments with the interest thereon to be received from the french government and transferred to the united states in such manner as he may deem best and by the same act of congress the stipulations on the part of the united states in the convention were in all respects fulfilled not doubting that a treaty thus made and ratified by the two governments and faithfully executed by the united states would be promptly complied with by the other party and desiring to avoid the risk and expense of intermediate agencies the secretary of the treasury deemed it advisable to receive and transfer the first installment by means of a draft upon the french minister of finance a draft for this purpose was accordingly drawn in favor of the cashier of the bank of the united states for the amount accruing to the united states out of the first installment and the interest payable with it this bill was not drawn at washington until five days after the installment was payable at paris and was accompanied by a special authority from the president authorizing the cashier or his assigns to receive the amount the mode thus adopted of receiving the installment was officially made known to the french government by the american charge d'affaires at paris pursuant to instructions from the department of state the bill however though not presented for payment until march twenty third eighteen thirty three was not paid and for the reason assigned by the french minister of finance that no appropriation had been made by the french chambers it is not known to me that up to that period any appropriation had been required of the chambers and although a communication was subsequently made to the chambers by direction of the king recommending that the necessary provision should be made for carrying the convention into effect it was at an advanced period of the session and the subject was finally postponed until the next meeting of the chambers notwithstanding it has been supposed by the french ministry that the financial stipulations of the treaty cannot be carried into effect without an appropriation by the chambers it appears to me to be not only consistent with the character of france but due to the character of both governments as well as to the rights of our citizens to treat the convention made and ratified in proper form as pledging the good faith of the french government for its execution and as imposing upon each department an obligation to fulfil it and i have received assurances through our charge d'affaires at paris and the french minister plenipotentiary at washington and more recently through the minister of the united states at paris that the delay has not proceeded from any indisposition on the part of the king and his ministers to fulfil their treaty and that measures will be presented at the next meeting of the chambers and with a reasonable hope of success to obtain the necessary appropriation it is necessary to state however that the documents except certain lists of vessels captured condemned or burnt at sea proper to facilitate the examination and liquidation of the reclamations comprised in the stipulations of the convention and which by the sixth article france engaged to communicate to the united states by the intermediary of the legation though repeatedly applied for by the american charge d'affaires under instructions from this government have not yet been communicated and this delay it is apprehended will necessarily prevent the completion of the duties assigned to the commissioners within the time at present prescribed by law the reasons for delaying to communicate these documents have not been explicitly stated and this is the more to be regretted as it is not understood that the interposition of the chambers is in any manner required for the delivery of those papers 
under these circumstances in a case so important to the interests of our citizens and to the character of our country and under disappointments so unexpected i deemed it my duty however i might respect the general assurances to which i have adverted no longer to delay the appointment of a minister plenipotentiary to paris but to dispatch him in season to communicate the result of his application to the french government at an early period of your session i accordingly appointed a distinguished citizen for this purpose who proceeded on his mission in august last and was presented to the king early in the month of october he is particularly instructed as to all matters connected with the present posture of affairs and i indulge the hope that with the representations he is instructed to make and from the disposition manifested by the king and his ministers in their recent assurances to our minister at paris the subject will be early considered and satisfactorily disposed of at the next meeting of the chambers as this subject involves important interests and has attracted a considerable share of the public attention i have deemed it proper to make this explicit statement of its actual condition and should i be disappointed in the hope now entertained the subject will be again brought to the notice of congress in such manner as the occasion may require the friendly relations which have always been maintained between the united states and russia have been further extended and strengthened by the treaty of navigation and commerce concluded on december sixth eighteen thirty two and sanctioned by the senate before the close of its last session the ratifications having been since exchanged the liberal provisions of the treaty are now in full force and under the encouragement which they have secured of flourishing and increasing commerce yielding its benefits to the enterprise of both nations affords to each the just recompense of wise measures and adds new motives for that mutual friendship which the two countries have hitherto cherished toward each other it affords me peculiar satisfaction to state that the government of spain has at length yielded to the justice of the claims which have been so long urged in behalf of our citizens and has expressed a willingness to provide an indemnification as soon as the proper amount can be agreed upon upon this latter point it is probable an understanding had taken place between the minister of the united states and the spanish government before the decease of the late king of spain and unless that event may have delayed its completion there is reason to hope that it may be in my power to announce to you early in your present session the conclusion of a convention upon terms not less favourable than those entered into for similar objects with other nations that act of justice would well accord with the character of spain and is due to the united states from their ancient friend it could not fail to strengthen the sentiments of amity and good-will between the two nations which it is so much the wish of the united states to cherish and so truly the interest of both to maintain by the first section of an act of congress passed on july thirteenth eighteen thirty two the tonnage duty on spanish ships arriving from the ports of spain previous to october twentieth eighteen seventeen being five cents per ton that act was intended to give effect on our side to an arrangement made with the spanish government by which discriminating duties of tonnage were to be abolished in the ports of the united states and spain on the vessels of the two nations pursuant to that arrangement which was carried into effect on the part of spain on may twentieth eighteen thirty two by a royal order dated april twenty ninth eighteen thirty two american vessels in the ports of spain have paid five cents per ton which rate of duty is also paid in those ports by spanish ships but as american vessels pay no tonnage duty in the ports of the united states the duty of five cents payable in our ports by spanish vessels under the act above mentioned is really a discriminating duty operating to the disadvantage of spain 
though no complaint has yet been made on the part of spain we are not the less bound by the obligations of good faith to remove the discrimination and i recommend that the act be amended accordingly as the royal order above alluded to includes the ports of the balearic and canary islands as well as those of spain it would seem that the provisions of the act of congress should be equally extensive and that for the repayments of such duties as may have been improperly received an addition should be made to the sum appropriated at the last session of congress for refunding discriminating duties as the arrangement referred to however did not embrace the islands of cuba and puerto rico discriminating duties to the prejudice of american shipping continued to be levied there from the extent of the commerce carried on between the united states and those islands particularly the former this discrimination causes serious injury to one of those great national interests which it has been considered an essential part of our policy to cherish and has given rise to complaints on the part of our merchants under instructions given to our minister at madrid earnest representations have been made by him to the spanish government upon this subject and there is reason to expect from the friendly disposition which is entertained toward this country that a beneficial change will be produced the disadvantage however to which our shipping is subjected by the operation of these discriminating duties requires that they be met by suitable countervailing duties during your present session power being at the same time vested in the president to modify or discontinue them as the discriminating duties on american vessels or their cargoes may be modified or discontinued at those islands intimations have been given to the spanish government that the united states may be obliged to resort to such measures as are of necessary self-defense and there is no reason to apprehend that it would be unfavorably received the proposed proceeding if adopted would not be permitted however in any degree to induce a relaxation in the efforts of our minister to effect a repeal of this irregularity by friendly negotiation and it might serve to give force to his representations by showing the dangers to which that valuable trade is exposed by the obstructions and burdens which a system of discriminating and countervailing duties necessarily produces the selection and preparation of the florida archives for the purpose of being delivered over to the united states in conformity with the royal order as mentioned in my last annual message though in progress has not yet been completed this delay has been produced partly by causes which were unavoidable particularly the prevalence of the cholera at havana but measures have been taken which it is believed will expedite the delivery of those important records congress were informed at the opening of the last session that owing as was alleged to embarrassments in the finances of portugal consequent upon the civil war in which that nation was engaged payment had been made of only one instalment of the amount which the portuguese government had stipulated to pay for indemnifying our citizens for property illegally captured in the blockade of tercera since that time a postponement for two years with interest of the two remaining instalments was requested by the portuguese government and as a consideration it offered to stipulate that rice of the united states should be admitted into portugal at the same duties as brazilian rice being satisfied that no better arrangement could be made my consent was given and a royal order of the king of portugal was accordingly issued on february fourth eighteen thirty three for the reduction of the duty on rice of the united states it would give me great pleasure if in speaking of that country in whose prosperity the united states are so much interested and with whom a long subsisting extensive and mutually advantageous commercial intercourse has strengthened the relation of friendship i could announce to you the restoration of its internal tranquillity subsequently to the commencement of the last session of congress the final instalment payable by denmark under the convention of march twenty eighth eighteen thirty was received the commissioners for examining the claims have since terminated their labors and their awards have been paid at the treasury as they have been called for 
the justice rendered to our citizens by that government is thus completed and a pledge is thereby afforded for the maintenance of that friendly intercourse becoming the relations that the two nations mutually bear to each other it is satisfactory to inform you that the danish government have recently issued an ordinance by which the commerce with the island of st croix is placed on a more liberal footing than heretofore this change cannot fail to prove beneficial to the trade between the united states and that colony and the advantages likely to flow from it may lead to greater relaxations in the colonial systems of other nations the ratifications of the convention with the king of the two sicilies have been duly exchanged and the commissioners appointed for examining the claims under it have entered upon the duties assigned to them by law the friendship that the interests of the two nations require of them being now established it may be hoped that each will enjoy the benefits which a liberal commerce should yield to both a treaty of amity and commerce between the united states and belgium was concluded during the last winter and received the sanction of the senate but the exchange of the ratifications has been hitherto delayed in consequence in the first instance of some delay in the reception of the treaty at brussels and subsequently of the absence of the belgian minister of foreign affairs at the important conferences in which his government is engaged at london that treaty does but embody those enlarged principles of friendly policy which it is sincerely hoped will always regulate the conduct of the two nations having such strong motives to maintain amicable relations toward each other and so sincerely desirous to cherish them with all the other european powers with whom the united states have formed diplomatic relations and with the sublime port the best understanding prevails from all i continue to receive assurances of good will toward the united states assurances which it gives me no less pleasure to reciprocate than to receive with all the engagements which have been entered into are fulfilled with good faith on both sides measures have also been taken to enlarge our friendly relations and extend our commercial intercourse with other states the system we have pursued of aiming at no exclusive advantages of dealing with all on terms of fair and equal reciprocity and of adhering scrupulously to all our engagements is well calculated to give success to efforts intended to be mutually beneficial the wars of which the southern part of this continent was so long the theatre and which were carried on either by the mother country against the states which had formerly been her colonies or by the states against each other having terminated and their civil dissensions having so far subsided as with few exceptions no longer to disturb the public tranquillity it is earnestly hoped those states will be able to employ themselves without interruption in perfecting their institutions cultivating the arts of peace and promoting by wise counsels and able exertions the public and private prosperity which their patriotic struggles so well entitled them to enjoy with those states our relations have undergone but little change during the present year no reunion having yet taken place between the states which compose the republic of colombia our charge d'affaires at bogota has been accredited to the government of new granada and we have therefore no diplomatic relations with venezuela and ecuador except as they may be included in those heretofore formed with the colombian republic it is understood that representatives from the three states were about to assemble at bogota to confer on the subject of their mutual interests particularly that of their union and if the result should render it necessary measures will be taken on our part to preserve with each that friendship and those liberal commercial connections which it has been the constant desire of the united states to cultivate with their sister republics of this hemisphere until the important question of reunion shall be settled however the different matters which have been under discussion between the united states and the republic of colombia or either of the states which composed it are not likely to be brought to a satisfactory issue 
in consequence of the illness of the charge d'affaires appointed to central america at the last session of congress he was prevented from proceeding on his mission until the month of october it is hoped however that he is by this time at his post and that the official intercourse unfortunately so long interrupted has been thus renewed on the part of the two nations so amicably and advantageously connected by engagements founded on the most enlarged principles of commercial reciprocity it is gratifying to state that since my last annual message some of the most important claims of our fellow-citizens upon the government of brazil have been satisfactorily adjusted and a reliance is placed on the friendly dispositions manifested by it that justice will also be done in others no new causes of complaint have arisen and the trade between the two countries flourishes under the encouragement secured to it by the liberal provisions of the treaty it is cause of regret that owing probably to the civil dissensions which have occupied the attention of the mexican government the time fixed by the treaty of limits with the united states for the meeting of the commissioners to define the boundaries between the two nations has been suffered to expire without the appointment of any commissioners on the part of that government while the true boundary remains in doubt by either party it is difficult to give effect to those measures which are necessary to the protection and quiet of our numerous citizens residing near that frontier the subject is one of great solicitude to the united states and will not fail to receive my earnest attention the treaty concluded with chile and approved by the senate at its last session was also ratified by the chilean government but with certain additional and explanatory articles of a nature to have required it to be again submitted to the senate the time limited for the exchange of the ratification however having since expired the action of both governments on the treaty will again become necessary the negotiations commence with the argentine republic relative to the outrages committed on our vessels engaged in the fisheries at the falkland islands by persons acting under the colour of its authority as well as the other matters in controversy between the two governments have been suspended by the departure of the charge d'affaires of the united states from buenos aires it is understood however that a minister was subsequently appointed by that government to renew the negotiation in the united states but though daily expected he has not yet arrived in this country with peru no treaty has yet been formed and with bolivia no diplomatic intercourse has yet been established it would be my endeavour to encourage those sentiments of amity and that liberal commerce which belong to the relations in which all the independent states of this continent stand toward each other i deem it proper to recommend to your notice the revision of our consular system this has become an important branch of the public service in as much as it is intimately connected with the preservation of our national character abroad with the interest of our citizens in foreign countries with the regulation and care of our commerce and with the protection of our seamen at the close of the last session of congress i communicated a report from the secretary of state upon the subject to which i now refer as containing information which may be useful in any inquiries that congress may see fit to institute with a view to a salutary reform of the system end of section ten section eleven of state of the union addresses eighteen twenty nine to eighteen thirty six this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org andrew jackson december third eighteen thirty three part two it gives me great pleasure to congratulate you upon the prosperous condition of the finances of the country as will appear from the report which the secretary of the treasury will in due time lay before you 
the receipts into the treasury during the present year will amount to more than thirty two million dollars the revenue derived from customs will it is believed be more than twenty eight million dollars and the public lands will yield about three million nine hundred thousand dollars the expenditures within the year for all objects including two million five hundred and seventy two thousand two hundred and forty dollars and ninety nine cents on account of the public debt will not amount to twenty five million dollars and a large balance will remain in the treasury after satisfying all the appropriations chargeable on the revenue for the present year the measures taken by the secretary of the treasury will probably enable to pay off in the course of the present year the residue of the exchange four point five per cent stock redeemable on january first eighteen thirty four it has therefore been included in the estimated expenditures of this year and forms a part of the sum above stated to have been paid on account of the public debt the payment of this stock will reduce the whole debt of the united states funded and unfunded to the sum of four million four million seven hundred and sixty thousand eighty two dollars and eight cents and as provision has already been made for the four point five per cent stocks above mentioned and charged in the expenses of the present year the sum last stated is all that now remains of the national debt and the revenue of the coming year together with the balance now in the treasury will be sufficient to discharge it after meeting the current expenses of the government under the power given to the commissioners of the sinking fund it will i have no doubt be purchased on favorable terms within the year from this view of the state of the finances and the public engagements yet to be fulfilled you will perceive that if providence permits me to meet you at another session i shall have the high gratification of announcing to you that the national debt is extinguished i cannot refrain from expressing the pleasure i feel at the near approach of that desirable event the short period of time within which the public debt will have been discharged is strong evidence of the abundant resources of the country and of the prudence and economy with which the government has heretofore been administered we have waged two wars since we became a nation with one of the most powerful kingdoms in the world both of them undertaken in defence of our dearest rights been successfully prosecuted and honourably terminated and many of those who partook in the first struggle as well as in the second will have lived to see the last item of the debt incurred in these necessary but expensive conflicts faithfully and honestly discharged and we shall have the proud satisfaction of bequeathing to the public servants who follow us in the administration of the government the rare blessing of a revenue sufficiently abundant raised without injustice or oppression to our citizens and unencumbered with any burdens but what they themselves shall think proper to impose upon it the flourishing state of the finances ought not however to encourage us to indulge in a lavish expenditure of the public treasure the receipts of the present year do not furnish the test by which we are to estimate the income of the next the changes made in our revenue system by the acts of congress of eighteen thirty two and eighteen thirty three and more especially by the former have swelled the receipts of the present year far beyond the amount to be expected in future years upon the reduced tariff of duties the shortened credits on revenue bonds and the cash duties on woolens which were introduced by the act of eighteen thirty two and took effect on march fourth eighteen thirty two have brought large sums into the treasury in eighteen thirty three which according to the credits formerly given would not have been payable until eighteen thirty four and would have formed a part of the income of that year these causes would of themselves produce a great diminution of the receipts in the year eighteen thirty four as compared with the present one and they will be still more diminished by the reduced rates of duties which take place on january first eighteen thirty four on some of the most important and productive articles 
upon the best estimates that can be made the receipts of the next year with the aid of the unappropriated amount now in the treasury will not be much more than sufficient to meet the expenses of the year and pay the small remnant of the national debt which yet remains unsatisfied i cannot therefore recommend to you any alteration in the present tariff of duties the rate as now fixed by law on the various articles was adopted at the last session of congress as a matter of compromise with unusual unanimity and unless it is found to produce more than the necessities of the government call for there would seem to be no reason at this time to justify a change but while i forbear to recommend any further reduction of the duties beyond that already provided for by the existing laws i must earnestly and respectfully press upon congress the importance of abstaining from all appropriations which are not absolutely required for the public interest and authorized by the powers clearly delegated to the united states we are beginning a new era in our government the national debt which has so long been a burden on the treasury will be finally discharged in the course of the ensuing year no more memory will afterwards be needed than what may be necessary to meet the ordinary expenses of the government now then is the proper moment to fix our system of expenditure on firm and durable principles and i cannot too strongly urge the necessity of a rigid economy and an inflexible determination not to enlarge the income beyond the real necessities of the government and not to increase the wants of the government by unnecessary and profuse expenditures if a contrary course should be pursued it may happen that the revenue of eighteen thirty four will fall short of the demands upon it and after reducing the tariff in order to lighten the burdens of the people and providing for a still further reduction to take effect hereafter it would be much to be deplored if at the end of another year we should find ourselves obliged to retrace our steps and impose additional taxes to meet unnecessary expenditures it is my duty on this occasion to call your attention to the destruction of the public building occupied by the treasury department which happened since the last adjournment of congress a thorough inquiry into the causes of this loss was directed and made at the time the result of which will be duly communicated to you i take pleasure however in stating here that by the laudable exertions of the officers of the department and many of the citizens of the district but few papers were lost and none that will materially affect the public interest the public convenience requires that another building should be erected as soon as practicable and in providing for it it will be advisable to enlarge in some manner the accommodations for the public officers of the several departments and to authorize the erection of suitable depositories for the safe keeping of the public documents and records since the last adjournment of congress the secretary of the treasury has directed the money of the united states to be deposited in certain state banks designated by him and he will immediately lay before you his reasons for this direction i concur with him entirely in the view he has taken on the subject and some months before the removal i urged upon the department the propriety of taking that step the near approach of the day on which the charger will expire as well as the conduct of the bank appeared to me to call for this measure upon the high considerations of public interest and public duty the extent of its misconduct however although known to be great was not at that time fully developed by proof it was not until late in the month of august that i received from the government directors an official report establishing beyond question that this great and powerful institution had been actively engaged in attempting to influence the elections of the public officers by means of its money and that in violation of the express provisions of its charter it had by a formal resolution placed its funds at the disposition of its president to be employed in sustaining the political power of the bank a copy of this resolution is contained in the report of the government directors before referred to and however the object may be disguised by cautious language no one can doubt that this money 
was in truth intended for electioneering purposes and the particular uses to which it was proved to have been applied abundantly show that it was so understood not only was the evidence complete as to the past application of the money and power of the bank to electioneering purposes but that the resolution of the board of directors authorized the same course to be pursued in future it being thus established by unquestionable proof that the bank of the united states was converted into a permanent electioneering engine it appeared to me that the path of duty which the executive department of the government ought to pursue was not doubtful as by the terms of the bank charter no officer but the secretary of the treasury could remove the deposits it seemed to me that this authority ought to be at once exerted to deprive that great corporation of the support and countenance of the government in such an use of its and such an exertion of its power in this point of the case the question is distinctly presented whether the people of the united states are to govern through representatives chosen by their unbiased suffrages or whether the money and power of a great corporation are to be secretly exerted to influence their judgment and control their decisions it must now be determined whether the bank is to have its candidates for all offices in the country from the highest to the lowest or whether candidates on both sides of political questions shall be brought forward as heretofore and supported by the usual means at this time the efforts of the bank to control public opinion through the distresses of some and the fears of others are equally apparent and if possible more objectionable by a curtailment of its accommodations more rapid than any emergency requires and even while it retains specie to an almost unprecedented amount in its vaults it is attempting to produce great embarrassment in one portion of the community while through presses known to have been sustained by its money it attempts by unfounded alarms to create a panic in all these are the means by which it seems to expect that it can force a restoration of the deposits and as a necessary consequence extort from congress a renewal of its charter i am happy to know that through the good sense of our people the effort to get up a panic has hitherto failed and that through the increased accommodations which the state banks have been enabled to afford no public distress has followed the exertions of the bank and it cannot be doubted that the exercise of its power and the expenditure of its money as well as its efforts to spread groundless alarm will be met and rebuked as they deserve in my own sphere of duty i should feel myself called on by the facts disclosed to order a sera facius against the bank with a view to put an end to the chartered rights it has so palpably violated were it not that the charter itself will expire as soon as a decision would probably be obtained from the court of last resort i called the attention of congress to this subject in my last annual message and informed them that such measures as were within the reach of the secretary of the treasury had been taken to enable him to judge whether the public deposits in the bank of the united states were entirely safe but that as his single powers might be inadequate to the object i recommended the subject to congress as worthy of their serious investigation declaring it as my opinion that an inquiry into the transactions of that institution embracing the branches as well as the principal bank was called for by the credit which was given throughout the country to many serious charges impeaching their character and which if true might justly excite the apprehension that they were no longer a safe depository for the public money the extent to which the examination thus recommended was gone into is spread upon your journals and is too well known to require to be stated such as was made resulted in a report from a majority of the committee of ways and means touching certain specified points only concluding with a resolution that the government deposits might safely be continued in the bank of the united states this resolution was adopted at the close of the session by the vote of a majority of the house of representatives although i may not always be able to concur in the views of the public interest or the duties of its agents which may be taken by the other departments of the government 
or either of its branches i am notwithstanding wholly incapable of receiving otherwise than with the most sincere respect all opinions or suggestions proceeding from such a source and in respect to none am i more inclined to do so than to the house of representatives but it will be seen from the brief views at this time taken of the subject by myself as well as the more ample ones presented by the secretary of the treasury that the change in the deposits which has been ordered has been deemed to be called for by considerations which are not affected by the proceedings referred to and which if correctly viewed by that department rendered its act a matter of imperious duty coming as you do for the most part immediately from the people and the states by election and possessing the fullest opportunity to know their sentiments the present congress will be sincerely solicitous to carry into full and fair effect the will of their constituents in regard to this institution it will be for those in whose behalf we all act to decide whether the executive department of the government in the steps which it has taken on this subject has been found in the line of its duty the accompanying report of the secretary of war with the documents annexed to it exhibits the operations of the war department for the past year and the condition of the various subjects entrusted to its administration it will be seen from them that the army maintains the character it has heretofore acquired for efficiency and military knowledge nothing has occurred since your last session to require its services beyond the ordinary routine duties which upon the seaboard and the inland frontier devolve upon it in a time of peace the system so wisely adopted and so long pursued of constructing fortifications at exposed points and of preparing and collecting the supplies necessary for the military defence of the country and thus providently furnishing in peace the means of defence in war has been continued with the usual results i recommend to your consideration the various subjects suggested in the report of the secretary of war their adoption would promote the public service and meliorate the condition of the army our relations with the various indian tribes have been undisturbed since the termination of the difficulties growing out of the hostile aggressions of the sac and fox indians several treaties have been formed for the relinquishment of territory to the united states and for the migration of the occupants of the region assigned for their residence west of the mississippi should these treaties be ratified by the senate provision will have been made for the removal of almost all the tribes remaining east of that river and for the termination of many difficult and embarrassing questions arising out of their anomalous political condition it is to be hoped that those portions of two of the southern tribes which in that event will present the only remaining difficulties will realize the necessity of emigration and will speedily resort to it my original convictions upon this subject have been confirmed by the course of events for several years and experience is every day adding to their strength that those tribes cannot exist surrounded by our settlements and in continual contact with our citizens is certain they have neither the intelligence the industry the moral habits nor the desire of improvement which are essential to any favorable change in their condition established in the midst of another and a superior race and without appreciating the causes of their inferiority or seeking to control them they must necessarily yield to the force of circumstances and ere long disappear such has been their fate heretofore and if it is to be averted and it is it can only be done by a general removal beyond our boundary and by the reorganization of their political system upon principles adapted to the new relations in which they will be placed the experiment which has been recently made has so far proved successful the emigrants generally are represented to be prosperous and contented the country suitable to their wants and habits and the essential articles of subsistence easily procured 
when the report of the commissioners now engaged in investigating the condition and prospects of these indians and in devising a plan for their intercourse and government is received i trust ample means of information will be in possession of the government for adjusting all the unsettled questions connected with this interesting subject the operations of the navy during the year and its present condition are fully exhibited in the annual report from the navy department suggestions are made by the secretary of various improvements which deserve careful consideration and most of which if adopted bid fair to promote the efficiency of this important branch of the public service among these are the new organization of the navy board the revision of the pay to officers and a change in the period of time or in the manner of making the annual appropriations to which i beg leave to call your particular attention the views which are presented on almost every portion of our naval concerns and especially on the amount of force and the number of officers and the general course of policy appropriate in the present state of our country for securing the great and useful purposes of naval protection and peace and due preparation for the contingencies of war meet with my entire approbation it will be perceived from the report referred to that the fiscal concerns of the establishment are in an excellent condition and it is hoped that congress may feel disposed to make promptly every suitable provision desired either for preserving or improving the system the general post office department has continued upon the strength of its own resources to facilitate the means of communication between the various portions of the union with increased activity the method however in which the accounts of the transportation of the mail have always been kept appears to have presented an imperfect view of its expenses it has recently been discovered that from the earliest records of the department the annual statements have been calculated to exhibit an amount considerably short of the actual expense incurred for that service these illusory statements together with the expense of carrying into effect the law of the last session of congress establishing new mail routes and a disposition on the part of the head of the department to gratify the wishes of the public in the extension of mail facilities have induced him to incur responsibilities for their improvement beyond what the current resources of the department would sustain as soon as he had discovered the imperfection of the method he caused an investigation to be made of its results and applied the proper remedy to correct the evil it became necessary for him to withdraw some of the improvements which he had made to bring the expenses of the department within its own resources these expenses were incurred for the public good and the public have enjoyed their benefit they are now but partially suspended and that where they may be discontinued with the least inconvenience to the country the progressive increase in the income from postages has equalled the highest expectations and it affords demonstrative evidence of the growing importance and great utility of this department the details are exhibited in the accompanying report of the postmaster-general the many distressing accidents which have of late occurred in that portion of our navigation carried on by the use of steam power deserve the immediate and unremitting attention of the constituted authorities of the country the fact that the number of those fatal disasters is constantly increasing notwithstanding the great improvements which are everywhere made in the machinery employed and in the rapid advances which have made in that branch of science shows very clearly that they are in a great degree the result of criminal negligence on the part of those by whom the vessels are navigated and to whose care and attention the lives and property of our citizens are so extensively entrusted that these evils may be greatly lessened if not substantially removed by means of precautionary and penal legislation seems to be highly probable so far therefore as the subject can be regarded as within the constitutional purview of congress i earnestly recommend it to your prompt and serious consideration i would also call your attention to the views i have heretofore expressed of the propriety of amending the constitution in relation to the mode of electing the president and the vice-president of the united states 
regarding it as all-important to the future quiet and harmony of the people that every intermediate agency in the election of these officers should be removed and that their eligibility should be limited to one term of either four or six years i cannot too earnestly invite your consideration of the subject trusting that your deliberations on all the topics of general interest to which i have adverted and such others as your more extensive knowledge of the wants of our beloved country may suggest may be crowned with success i tender you in conclusion the cooperation which it may be in my power to afford them End of section eleven